guys, it's Sarah J and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking to you about some of my favourite childhood books. I have a bunch of Enid Blyton books and other childhood books in my loft and I'd kind of forgotten about them and then I was talking to my friends Siobhan and Suze about them because they were talking about childhood books and I thought actually let's make a video about this. So today I'm going to be going through a huge box that has been in my loft. I haven't looked in this box I think for maybe something like three years so I roughly know what's in there but I don't know completely so I thought I'm gonna have a look and show you guys what I find. So this is the box, it's way too heavy to actually lift up. Um, I'm gonna open it. I'm hoping that there's no spiders in here. This is like an unboxing of stuff that I already own. Okay, this isn't working very well. So most of the books in this box are Enid Blyton books. They're mostly all the ones that I have kept. There's a few other ones in there, but I'm pretty sure most of them are Enid Blyton, so let's see what's inside. So in the box we have Famous Five books. Now I absolutely adored Famous Five when I was a child. I thought that George was the best character that I had ever come across and I used to try and like pretend I was George because I had a little dog myself and I used to like try and go on little adventures with her. So I absolutely adored these. These are actually probably the books that first got me into reading. Like it was the Famous Five books that made me fall in love with stories. I would much prefer to show you all my Famous Five books and then move on to like another category Category, but this box is so messed up I'm just gonna put these over here. I hope I have them all. I'm gonna be very annoyed. What do we have here? Oh my god I loved this one. This one is a story collection. They're not necessarily really really short stories but there's lots of stories in this one book. I reread this like a hundred times. I don't even think that's an exaggeration. I remember the story starting with a really big font I think. Yeah. Oh my god it's falling apart. So the story started with a really big font and then like the further you get into different stories the font gets smaller and smaller. Oh it doesn't. Yes it does. So like the first stories start off as quite like easy reading books and then as you get further on into the stories the font gets smaller, the stories get a little bit more difficult to read so it was a really great book to read growing up because I could learn with the book. So on here we had The Caravan Family. I remember wanting my mum and dad to get a caravan after reading this book. The Buttercup Farm Family, Runabout's Holiday, the Birthday Kitten, The Boy Who Wanted a Dog, The Four Cousins, The House at the Corner. The Boy Who Wanted a Dog was my favourite. None of my books actually have dust jackets on. I don't think I even had them when they had dust jackets on because a lot of them were second hand and came from like boot sales and jumble sales. This one is Enid Blyton's Book of Fairies and this one my uncle actually gave me. He gave me this book when I was really little. Why, I do believe that's the fairy queen on that throne that Bobby Shaw talks about a lot. Oh, that smells a little bit actually. Maybe this is when I fell in love with the Fae and fairies. Oh, oh I want to read this now. I'm not gonna, but... Well, this book has been very loved. This book is Enid Blyton's Six Cousins again. I think this is like the second book. And I think there's a bit missing of this actually. Yes. This book only goes up to chapter 14 and then it... There's a bit missing, so... Really I shouldn't keep this, but I'm probably going to. And here we have two more famous five books. We have Five Have Plenty of Fun and Five Get Into a Fix. I also seem to have two copies of Five Go to Demon's Rocks. Don't know why, but I do. And then we also have some Secret Seven books. I have Go Ahead Secret Seven with a really dodgy book cover and also Puzzle for the Secret Seven. I loved the Secret Seven so much. I was more of a famous five girl, but I think that partly had something to do with there being the TV series to watch at the time. But I loved these. So these are the first three books in the Secret Seven series. So you have The Secret Seven, The Secret Seven Adventure, and Well Done Secret Seven, and it's three books in one. Oh, being a child, and this was what three books looked like. I miss that. Oh, it's even got little pictures in it, look! Oh, this is the cutest thing. Oh, nostalgia. This is Secret Seven, fun for the Secret Seven. This book is tiny. You know as a kid when like you think your childhood books are really really big and then you discover that they're really not. Okay I've got another three. I've got The Famous Five, Five Have a Wonderful Time, Five Go to Demon's Rocks. Seriously? So I have two of the same cover and one of a different cover. I don't even know what's happening there. I also have The Secret Seven, Secret Seven Mystery and I think this is one of the books that I actually had new because it looks 
new in comparison to the others. I've also got five have a mystery to solve with a picture of kids who definitely do not look like the famous five. I don't ever remember Anne having a perm. Oh, I don't know about you guys, but did you ever feel like the food was really, really gross in like the famous five? We'll open a tin of tongue, said Anne. Oh, duck. That being said, I do remember really wanting lemon curd sandwiches because the famous five ate lemon curd and then realised lemon curd was disgusting, but still carried on eating it anyway. Kid logic. What else do we have? We've got three books here that don't have dust jackets and they're all red. Five go to Smuggler's Top, Five go adventuring again and The Island of Adventure. So these are both hardbacks of the famous five. They originally would have had dust jackets but I never even had the dust jackets with them because I think these came from like boot sales and stuff. And this is The Island of Adventure. I absolutely loved these. I think you had The Island of Adventure, The Ship of Adventure, can't remember anymore, but I like this one. Oh my god, this one's one of my favourites! The wishing chair! Oh my god! Oh, I loved this book so much. I remember this book perfectly. There's a boy and a girl, can't remember their names, and they go into a shop and they try and buy a present for their mum, and then they sit in this wishing chair, and then when they make wishes, the chair takes them to the places that they want to go. Oh, oh my god, I remember this now. So. I got this book from a charity shop and I was really really angry because people had written in it and it said happy birthday from Natalie and I was like who is this so I crossed it out and then somebody decided to write this book goes up to page 813 and I was like what so I crossed all that out and wrote my name inside I didn't want anybody else writing in it Molly and Peter oh here we have two more Secret 7 books. We have Good Old Secret 7 and Fun for the Secret 7. Have I already shown this one? Oh no, it's just a different one with a horse on it. It's okay. I'm not going to lie, these books smell a little bit musty. So I have Five Are Together Again, which is the story with the monkey. I've also got Come to the Circus by Enid Blyton and Secret 7, Secret 7 Fireworks. Now this book, I don't actually know why I've kept because I don't like it. This book is The Famous Five and the Mystery of the Emeralds. It looks very similar to this one, which is The Famous Five and then Five on a Hike Together. But this one is The Famous Five and the Mystery of the Emeralds. This does not have Enid Blyton's name on the front because this one isn't actually written by Enid Blyton. A new adventure of the characters created by Enid Blyton told by Claude Waller, translated by Anthea Bell. No, 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 no. I remember my mum getting this book for me and I was so outraged at the idea that somebody could just pick up the famous five and continue it. I told her I was never ever going to read it and I never did. I'm not going to keep this one. I am actually going to get rid of it because I have no desire to keep it. What is this one? This one's well old. This one is ancient! Look how faded it is! This is The Naughtiest Girl again, and it also seems to have a hair on it, which is lovely. This one is about a really, really naughty schoolgirl. I remember this one. I think the first one is The Naughtiest Girl in the School, and this one is The Naughtiest Girl again. I did really, really like these. <laughs> so this one is one of my most favourite books from when I was a child. I remember reading this when I was really, really small, and it is The Letter Men Go On A Picnic. It's so old, but I literally loved it. And it has my name in the front, which my mum wrote because I wanted to take it to school. So the story is told by these letter men who are basically men made of letters and then they go places, like, and they spell the words. <laughs> oh my god, I loved this. What's that over there by those trees? Can you see it? Where? I'm actually going to keep this book out and show it to my cousins. Oh god, I'm never getting rid of this. Never, 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 never. So these books are both doggy books. This one is called Dog Stories and it's a collection of short stories about dogs. This one is called Shadow the Sheepdog and it's about a little sheepdog puppy and it's like through his life, I think. I remember absolutely adoring this book to the point where I read it over and over and over and over and over. So I've got some more here and we have The Mystery of Tally Ho Cottage by Enid Blyton. Famous Five, Five Go To Smugglers Top. Five go off in a caravan. And also Famous Five, Five on Kirin Island again. And this is another one that I got new because this one has the cast from the TV series that was out when I was younger. And I remember getting this for my birthday. This one actually does have a dust jacket on it and it's Enid Blyton's Stories For You. 
don't really remember loving this one too much. So maybe I did lose the dust jackets and I just don't remember. Oh, it only cost 20p. I also have Secret 7 on the trail. And I also have The Children of Cherry Tree Farm. I absolutely loved this one. I've got a few more thin ones. So I've got Lookout Secret 7, The Mystery of Banshee Towers, Happy Hours Storybook, The Family at Red Roofs. I don't know if I remember this. Hmm. I'm not sure if I read this one. Maybe I did. If I did, I don't remember it. Okay, so we also have Five Got Off to Camp, Five Get Into Trouble, and also Five Fall Into Adventure. I've also got more adventures on Willow Farm, which was the second one in a series, and I absolutely love this one. Oh, this one's got my name in, and I wrote my name in this one. Aww. And I've got three more hardbacks to show you, which is Five Got Off to Camp, Five Get Into Trouble, which I've already got, and Third Year at Mallory Towers. This seems to be the only Mallory Towers book that I have still but these were one of my favorites as well and there's two more books in here and one of them isn't Enid Blyton and one of them is I'm going to show the one that's not Enid Blyton first because the last one is a little bit special so this one as you can see is not an Enid Blyton book this is a book that I read when I was a teenager and this is Sweet Valley University Sweet Valley University followed the twins Elizabeth and Jessica Wakefield after the Sweet Valley High series so this one was one of my absolute favorites of the Sweet Valley High series clearly I kept it but Oh, oh, it says YA. That makes me feel all nostalgic. <laughs> and the final book that I had to show you is a secondary copy of a book I've already showed you, The Island of Adventure, except this one is really, really old. This copy is so old that it's actually covered in fabric. It is in very bad condition, I'm very aware of that. The spines are falling apart, you can only just open the pictures. It only costs 50p from a charity shop. And it's actually from 1948. I really really love this one, it is falling apart, some of the pages are falling out, it's not worth anything because it's in such bad condition but I adore it, I adore having an Enid Blyton book that is this old. It's not a first edition, I think it's a second edition. Yeah, the first edition was printed in 1944 and this one was printed in 1948 so it's a second edition but it has a real place in my heart, I love it. So that's it, they're my childhood books from The Loft. I hope you guys enjoyed that. It was a bit long, I didn't realise how many of them there still were. I'm going to be keeping them all except for that traitorous book. That one is going, the fake Famous Five. But aside from that I'm going to be keeping them all because they all hold very special memories to me and I loved filming this. So I hope you guys liked it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have read or loved any of the books that I've shown in this video, please comment down below and tell me what they are because I love talking nostalgia. I just love it. I just love it. So that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this and I will see you again next time. Bye! My heart, my little fangirl heart contracted just hearing Miles' name. Can't handle it. Feel worthy moment number five is on page 138 and this is also a Miles Archer moment.